to be back in the house of the Lord yet once again. I rise this morning giving all honor to God who truly is my life. I do understand and appreciate that without him I am nothing and nobody. Amen. We're going to have our scripture reading and then we will have our deacons come and render us in our devotion. Amen. Scripture reading for this morning. We're coming out of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, starting at verse number 10. Once again, that's Ephesians, the sixth chapter, starting at verse number 10. We ask that all that are able to stand and give reverence to God, for he alone is worthy, that you do so on behalf of him. Scripture reading once again for this morning, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, starting at verse number 10. If you've got it, say amen. amen. If you need some more time, say hold on, because we will wait on you. Amen. And it reads as follows. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Right. Put on the whole armor of God yeah. that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change that in it that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. I read for you here this morning Ephesians the 6th chapter the 10th through the 20th verse. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his most holy and divine word. Amen. church. Good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. For he kept us in spite of ourselves and bid it our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. So we come in to praise his name and give him glory for he will of all our praise. And so we're going to sing a voice to the song and then we're going to have a word of prayer. Shine on
each and every opposition, auxiliary uh -huh. of the church. Right. Oh God, you know what we stand in need of. Yes. Oh God, give us that love to run from heart to heart and breath to breath. Right. Oh God, we just come here and praise in your name. Yes. Realize that you watched over our many different homes uh -huh. as we slumbered and slept in our bed. Right. And right early this morning, you touched us with your finger. Uh -huh. And we just come in to give you glory. For keeping us and bringing us. Realize that we couldn't bring ourselves. But we just depending on you. And I'm putting all our trust in you. For, because you created us. You brought us when we couldn't bring ourselves. Oh God, we thank you. Thank you for keeping us on the highway. Thank you for keeping us keeping on. Realize that you are the and the finish of our faith. Oh God, we just praising your name this morning. We want to give you glory. We realize that you've been over our heads as a mighty shelter. Uh -huh. yeah. You've been around us like the walls around Jerusalem. Yeah. You've been beneath our feet as a sure foundation. Uh -huh. Oh God, we just thank you. Thank you, thank you for the sunshine. Right. We thank you for the rain. Yeah. Oh God, we realize that you is just the great I am. Yeah. The King of kings. Yeah. Lord of lords. Right. The Prince of Peace. Yeah. The Lord God Almighty is able to keep us in perfect oh, yeah, peace. Yeah. And we just want to glorify your name and realize that you're the keep of our life and not we ourselves. Oh God, keep us depending on you and look to the hill which all our help coming from you. All our help coming from you. Each and every day of our life. We praise your name. We give you glory. You gave your very best for us. Your darling son on yonder's cross. He just sat up on many more. He went down in the grave. But right early that third appointed morning, there was a rumbling and a shaking. And we realized the mighty rock got out of a rock and went on back to heaven. And oh God, we enjoying that right today. Because you gave your very best. Your darling son on the cross. We just praise your name. We give you glory. Oh, God, keep us in your way. Keep us in your way. Oh, God, enable us to realize that your grace and mercy yeah. have brought us from a mighty long way. And we just leaning and depending on your unchanging hand. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for each and every day of our lives. Oh, God, thank you for the fresh air you give us to breathe each and every day. Oh, God, we can't take it for granted. Because we realize that it was you that give us, give it to us each and every day. Because you created everything. Oh, God, we just thank you for it. Realize that you begin it. From the dust of the earth, Adam, you created it. Oh, God, you give him the power to bend your everything. But, oh, God, when you break his commandments, uh -huh. you got this consequence. And we just thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. You're able to keep us in perfect peace. Oh, God, thank you for the past. Oh, God, bless this thing for which we are Oh, God, able him to bring us a rain of worry. Right. And able us to take it in and carry us up and down the street. Tell men and women everywhere to flee from the wrath. Because the wrath is for God is able to keep us uh -huh. in perfect peace. As these all of us, God's blessing. Amen.
us this morning. Amen. Amen. On behalf of the family here at Limestone, we do want to welcome you to services today. If there's anything that we can do to make your visit more pleasant, by all means, please do let us know. Amen. Amen. And they just kind of led up to the next part of what our service is, where they said, burdens down. Yes. Where you can lay your burdens down. That's why we have altar call. So it is now time for altar call. Anything that you want to lay at the feet of Jesus and allow him to fix whatever that situation is. He can heal whatever needs to be healed. He can put back together whatever needs to be put back together. But you've got to be willing to give it to him and let it go and let God. It's now time for altar call. Amen. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father, also which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you would not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. Heavenly Father, we come here again, another Sunday morning, come here to give you all the honor. All the praise and all the glory yeah. that you so richly deserve. Yeah. And Heaven Father, we didn't count it robbery yeah. to come here. We were glad. Yeah. We were glad when they said, yeah. let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah. And Lord, we came here. We entered your gate with some thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, we came before your courts with some praise. Yeah. We always thankful unto you. Yeah. And we always ready to bless your name. Yeah. So Heaven Father, we know that by coming in, we unfair short somewhere. Yeah. So we come here first, Heavenly Father, to, to ask you for forgiveness for anything wrong we might have done. But Heavenly Father, we can't put all the work on you. Now, Heavenly Father, we in return got to learn to forgive somebody else. Somebody might have offended me. But Heavenly Father, just as I ask you for forgiveness, I got to be willing to re re uh, release some forgiveness to somebody else. So Heavenly Father, you got, we, we need to be about your business. Yeah. We need to prove to the world that you, well, we are your children. Yeah. So as you forgive us, we got to forgive somebody. Because yeah. if we don't, then you won't forgive us. Yeah. And Heavenly Father, we look forward every morning yeah. to those bowls of mercy, yeah. bowl full of mercy we get from you every morning. Yeah. But at the same time, we keep holding grudges from yesterday. Yeah. But Heavenly Father, just teach us yeah. to let yesterday go. Yeah. Let it go. Somebody did us wrong yesterday, but it's a new day. I got new mercies from you. I got to make sure I release it to somebody else. I can't hold it. Heaven Father, we got to learn to forgive just like you forgive us. Forgiveness is a must, and we just can't hold it just for us, but we got to release it for someone else. So we thank you for everyone that's here. We ask you to bless every home that's represented here. Bless every loved one that's near and dear to everyone that's here. And Heavenly Father, we want you just sprinting us. Yeah. Fill us up yeah. so we can be the people that you calling for. Yeah. Not just on Sunday, yeah. but Heavenly Father, on Monday and yeah. Tuesday and Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, yeah. Friday, and Saturday. Yeah. We want to be your people. Yeah. We need to be about your business because the world is, is gone mad. Yeah. The world is gone contrary. Yeah. The world is gone being about its business. Yeah. 
but you told us in your word that the wisdom of this world, it ain't nothing but a bunch of foolishness to you. People going on, going around trying to do their thing. But we need to be about your business and your word taught us that we don't live by no bread alone, but we live by every word that comes out of your mouth. So Heavenly Father, just teach us to, to study your word, to meditate your word, to put your word into our heart, and then once we get it there, we'll be able to act it out in open. The Lord, we are your people, and you said that we are the light of the world. Uh, we can't hide this light, but we got to let it shine so people will know whose side we on. Just like you were the light of the world, we the light of the world. As long as we here, we the light, just like you were the light as long as you were here. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for these people. So, Heavenly Father, whatever people stand in need with around this offering, after forgiveness has been passed out, Heavenly Father, we're going to ask you to bless these people around this altar who thought enough to just come this few steps to this altar, bless them with the blessing they stand in need of. Heavenly Father, some of them stand in need of one thing, some of them stand in need of another. But we know that you're such a great big God. You can bless us all at the same time. So whatever it is, Lord, you can bless it to us. Lord, you can bless it. We need blessings in the mental areas. If we need it in the physical areas of our life. We all need it spiritually, but if we need it emotionally, we all need it financially. That's whatever it is, bless us. Because you said that we can have this life and we can have it more abundantly. So we want abundance in all things. But we also want abundance in faith. We also want a, abundance in love. We also want an abundance in kindness. We also want an abundance in being concerned about somebody else and not just looking on your own thing. But that's what your word told us. Look not every man on his own thing, but also on the things of others. So, Heavenly Father, if we just knit together, it's hard for any of us to fall. We can't fall for the other. We can hold up one another, strengthen one another, encourage one another. And be a light for one another so that we can be the children that you're calling for us to do, for us to be. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. It's a great day. It's a day you done made. And we're going to continue to be, to be rejoiceful in this day. We thank you for the seniors that you allowed to get together to try to minister us some music. Heavenly Father, you allowed us to call ourselves the golden generation just because we've been around a little while. Just a few days on this earth, but even these few days we've been around, it's just a moment compared to eternity. So we need to prepare for eternity, because eternity is a long time. And if we don't enjoy being about your business here on earth, there's no need for us to try to go to heaven, because we'll have to praise you all day, never cease from praising you. We won't have to make excuses that we got to go somewhere else, because we won't be able to go nowhere else, but just praise you. So there's nothing else for us to do but praise you right now. And your words say, let everything that God breath praise ye the Lord. And you said it again, praise ye the Lord. Thank you for this day, Lord. It's the day you done made. We're going to continue to rejoice and be glad in it. This is my prayer, Christ's name. Amen.
prepare our hearts and minds for your giving. Once you've got your tithes and your offering prepared, we ask that you stand to your feet, place it in your right hand, and we're going to raise a high unto God on today. See, your giving is a praise to God as well. Amen. Your giving is a praise to God as well. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Father God, we come as humble as we know how to your throne of grace and mercy. And Father God, we come today being those cheerful givers that you call for us to be. We dare not give you anything begrudgingly on today, Father God, because you didn't hold back anything from us. You gave us your very best. So on today, Father God, we're giving back to you that which belongs unto you. And it's not, Lord, just the tithes and the offering and the pledges that may or may not be in the envelope or in our hands, Father God. But on today, we want to give ourselves back to you, totally committed and sold out to you on today, Father God. That you may use us, Lord Jesus, as well as this money, Lord Jesus, for your kingdom building process here at 1613 West Main Street. Because see, once the money comes, the workers got to come to get the work done that you set forth in this place. So on today, Father God, we dare not deny you anything that you will do on today, Father God. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity and the ability to give back to you that which belongs unto you. So, Father God, we pray that you take this and us. We bless your name. These and many of the blessings we do ask in Jesus Christ's name and his sake. Amen.
attention to the book of Romans chapter 5. And our reading will begin at the first verse. Romans chapter 5. chapter 5 beginning at the first verse if you've arrived at the destination we ask you to say amen. amen if you need more time say hold on seeing that all appear to be ready we will begin our reading therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. 
And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint, but the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The word of God for the people of God. The people said, Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, you are awesome. We thank you for the manifestation of your spirit in your house of worship. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence. Now, Lord God, we pray to sit attentively and hear what you speak to us. Guide us now, Lord God, that we draw in every wandering thought, every distraction be rebuked in the name of Jesus. And we pray now, Lord God, that we hear a word from heaven. To do that, Lord God, I must confess I can do nothing and that this vessel is yours. Please use it, Lord God, for the glory of your kingdom. So now hide me behind the cross and lay me at the feet of Jesus. Not my will, but thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. And it's said this last few weeks or several weeks, God has continued to push my discussion of the word faith from sermon to sermon. We know that the just shall live by faith. We know that faith has to be a now kind of thing. We know that there is ineffective faith. We know that there is weak faith. And I want to continue on this afternoon to continue to talk about effective faith. Effective faith. Faith ought to cause us to triumph in times of trouble. The text therefore says, therefore, having been justified by faith. You see, we must believe that Jesus Christ is Savior of the world that he is our redeemer and he lives. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I am redeemed. I love the song and I love the verse, but I want to put one more thing on you. You ought to be able to tell them for yourself. In other words, your testimony, your character, your walk, your talk ought to be a living example the Christ that liveth in you. Effective faith will cause you to deny yourself. Effective faith will cause you to walk upright in the presence of God. So therefore, it should never be a time or an occasion for a Christian not to be walking in faith. Because God is everywhere. He knows all things and he sees all. He's no place absent. And so when we are out and about, no matter what, we should be about our Father's business. Amen? He says now, we are justified by faith. In other words, faith in Jesus Christ because he is our justification. He died for your sins and for my sins. Had there been no shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. Just anybody could not have done it. No one could have gone to pay your penalty, your death for you. Just Jesus. He was the only way. Now, if we know then that the just live by full faith and that we've been justified by faith, then we have peace with God. Well, I mean, somebody just said, what do you mean we have peace with God, Pastor? You need to understand that God is at war with sinners. 
because God hates sin. And he is wiping out every blemish that is against his divine will. So either you are on his side or you are against him. And if you are not walking in true faith, I'm talking about the kind of faith that heals a sin-sick soul. I'm talking about the kind of faith that will cause you to deny yourself and walk in truth. I'm talking about the kind of faith that causes you to love your enemy. I'm talking about the kind of faith that has a spirit of expectancy that believes what you yet to see shall come to pass. Y'all ought to hear me. Here it is now. He says, we have peace with God. And you, didn't, you need to understand, you didn't get peace with God by any works that you've done. It's not by any meritorious type efforts that you have placed forward. As a matter of fact, it is simply by the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he stood in on your behalf. And he's still standing in because the blood is what covers us and keeps us from the penalty that we should pay. Somebody went your bail. Somebody paid for your bond. And you know what? He was a ransom just for you. <laughs> oh, that ought to be enough to make you shout now. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, I, I, I don't know. There might come a time when I have to quit saying to people, maybe you ought to shout. Sooner or later, it's going to just hit you <laughs> that you didn't deserve to live. Yeah, I like the way the old folks said it wasn't fitting to live, wasn't fitting to die. <laughs> you know, words, I wasn't good for nothing. <laughs> I was just tore up from the floor up. <laughs> and now because of the grace of God, I can stand in the presence and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help do I know. If you withdraw yourself from me, where shall I go? I'm so sure glad I don't have to answer that question. Because <laughs> I want to go to my father's house. Yeah, how many of you got faith that you're going to go to your father's house? Mm, I'm not talking about your earthen father, but I'm talking about to a house that's not made by hand. How many of you believe you're going to see him over yonder where the hearse wheel don't roll no more? Every day will be Sunday and the sweet Sabbath shall have no end. How many are going to shout hallelujah when you get over yonder and praise his holy name? I'm talking about a place that nobody... I ain't heard nobody talking about we want a refund. And, the, and here's the news. Just anybody can't go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just anybody can't go. You, you got to have a ticket and your price has got to be paid. You got to be bought up, sold out, tied up. <laughs> yeah. You got to know Jesus. Yeah. If you don't know him. And, I, and you got to know him by faith. Yeah. You got to know him through his word. Because he is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. I'm talking about Jesus. Y'all, leave y'all alone. They're all by myself. Listen, not only does our peace rest upon his shoulder. Isn't that, what, isn't that what Isaiah said? And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Yes. Now it says, through whom also we have ex access by faith unto this grace. Whoa, well, my goodness. I, I'm so glad to know that I got access. You see, that because before Jesus, before me becoming a believer, before my faith, I didn't have means to have access to the Father. You see, I was shut out, put out, and I couldn't get in. But now that I got a Savior, now I can say Jesus <laughs> is my light. I can say Jesus is my answer. I can say Jesus is my warlord. I can say he's my battle act. I can say he's my people. But most of all, I can say he's my Savior of my soul. I can say he made me whole again. He, he washed me white as snow so that now when God looks at me, he no longer sees the wretch that I am, but he sees the image of the one that is acceptable in his presence. He said, he looks like my son. <laughs> I'm so glad that, that he, didn't, he didn't get mad and say, I ain't going to go down there and save them. 
I'm glad that he was willing to sacrifice himself so that we could have everlasting and eternal life. Mm-mm-mm. Anybody in here want to live? Oh, y'all, you were slow about that. Let me ask the question. Anybody in here want to live? Uh, then you ought to say so. <laughs> the Bible said that the redeemer of the Lord say so. You know, because if you're alive, then you ought to have a praise on your lip. You ought to be able to say, thank you, Jesus, for waking me up this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for some of our of health and strength. Thank you, Jesus, for starting me on my way. Thank you, Jesus, for clothing me in my right mind. Thank you, Jesus. For helping me and protecting me from the hater raiders. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping me from my enemies. Thank you, Lord, for my smile on my face. <laughs> yeah, you've been good. Been better to me than you've been to myself. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I, I, I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm just where the spirit lead me now. Mm. Uh, through whom we. Uh, have access by faith to grace in which we stand and rejoice. And what? Rejoice. You know, I suggest to Christians that even we need to understand that even while we're in the midst of trials and tribulation, we ought to be rejoicing. You know, I know, I know that, that the trouble will try to get you down, but you need to just remember trouble don't last. Always. You see, the enemy is going to always try to trip you up. But, but when if you fall, you need to know that you can get back up. Because God's grace will lift you up. When nobody else will pick you up. When people will walk by and see you in the mud. And talk about you in the mud. Don't you worry. God is a mud breaker. He can bake that mud and make you over again. Break that mud because mud becomes clay. And when he gets through breaking the clay, you'll come out like pure gold. Yeah, but you got to know him. <laughs> and you got to know him for yourself. You got to know him through faith. Effective faith will, set, but will it get you to tell somebody, I know a man. And his name is, I just want to know if you knew. <laughs> Here we are. The word now says, mm, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. Now the folks have been coming to Bible study Wednesday night. I think you, you probably get this. You now remember there's a season of time when it's talking about tribulation and great tribulation. Now I, 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 as I shared with you at Bible study that, that, that it seems to me theoretically that either going to be some folks that's in that number that John saw coming up through great tribulation. Then there's going to be some folks that within 144,000 that were the tribes of Israel. Now, that, now, 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 listen. If you don't plan on being in the great tribulation, then you might have un- gone through the tribulation. But you better be hoping you've been raptured up. Y'all, to see, you missed it. You missed it. The Bible clearly tells us that that number that John saw is coming up through great tribulation. If you are here during that time period, you're going to go through some stuff. That's what I, I'll just go on. Ain't nobody listening to you. That's fine. I, I'm going to just go on. <laughs> but you see, we are already in tribulation. Right now is tribulation. If you, if you don't think you've been going through some stuff, stop and look back over your life. Stop and examine what God has brought you out of and brought you through. Stop and look at the people that have been hating on you. Stop and look at the folks that have been cussing at you. Stop and look at the folks that have been trying to misuse and abuse you. Stop and think about what is it you thought you didn't have. But through it all, <laughs> I've learned to trust in God. I've learned to lean and depend on him and say, Lord God, I know you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I think ask, but everything will be all right in Christ Jesus, y'all. Hit somebody and tell me, it's good in my life. Just yeah. <laughs> look up say, no, you can't tell it by the clothes I wear. You can't tell it by the by all the food that I might have on my table or I don't have. You can't tell it about the house I don't have or do have. But all you ought to be able to tell it by my walk, by my attitude. Because no matter what it is, in the midst of the storms in my life, I'm going to still praise God. In the midst of the trials and the tribulation, I'm going to lift his holy name. When everything looks like it's against me, I'm going to stand still and see the salvation.
declaration of the Lord. I will tell my enemy, you can't do no harm to me because great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm more than a conqueror. You can't touch me. When I'm walking by faith, I can stand like David and tell Goliath, you dare insult the Lord and I'll take a stone. (laughs) When I'm standing in faith, I can tell the world, you can't do no harm to me. When I'm walking by faith, I can walk on my job and say, you can direct my path as far as the work, but everything is going to be all right because I serve a God. He's the only one that can find me. He's the only one that can hide me, but he's the only one that can keep me. I'm tired of folks walking around. Talk about I got faith and always walking like you scared. You better walk like you got authority in Christ Jesus. Yeah. You better start telling folks, you better leave me alone. My father don't play that. <laughs> he told me he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. And if he said it, Therefore, therefore, when I go through tribulations, when I go through trials, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. (laughs) He leads me beside the still waters. He restored my soul for it. Yeah. Yea, though I walk, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But here's the good news you see what he does? He, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies if my enemies in the house you need to know that everything is going to be all right you can come up against me but i rebuke you in the name of jesus christ the lily of the valley the right and the morning star the wheel in the middle of the wheel somebody ought to help me close up on this thing i feel like preaching i lord have mercy <laughs> let me i need to get something <laughs> so therefore guess what when they keep on misbu- misusing me they continue to abuse me I'm just going to sit. I'm just going to sit down. I'm going to wait. I'm on the Lord. You know what happens when you wait up on the Lord. They that wait up on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall my wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and pray not. Y'all need to understand. I'm on my way. I feel, I feel, I feel like praising him. I feel like praising him. Why? Because he's worthy of all my praise. I got faith the size of a mustard seed. If I plant that seed, what I'm hoping for, what I'm looking for, it shall come to pass. Somebody ought to understand that his work is patience in you. That's why people look at you say, you are a strange kind of fella. It looks like when you ought to be getting mad, you seem like you got joy. That's because I understand weeping may endure it for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. It's morning time. I got joy. I got joy deep down in my soul. I got joy in my feet. I got joy in my hands. I got joy. Joy all over me. Somebody said something wrong with him. Yes, it is. Something got 
a hold of me. But I can tell you that something when nobody but the Holy Ghost. Yes, it's the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, if I go through and I just wait on him, then I persevere. Because I found out the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong. Y'all ought to hit somebody. Kaepernick with the San Francisco 49er. He be kissing his muscle, but I'm telling you, I'm going to kiss Jesus. Because he's all that I need. Yeah, Lord. You ought to remember who brought you. You ought to remember who saved you. You ought to remember that he's the great I am. He'll be your bread when you're hungry. Water when you're thirsty. Bridge over troubled waters. Shelter in the time of storm. He'll be all and your all. Anybody know this man Jesus? Mary's baby. Lily of the valley, bright in the morning star, wheel in the middle of the wheel, Alpha and Omega. Come on, somebody. Help me now. As I close this thing, Lord have mercy. He says, now listen, tribulation will produce perseverance and perseverance character. Y'all don't mind if I stop right there. Basically, what he's saying is that it produce character. Get this. I'm going to give you one word for character. P-R-O-O-F. Proof. <laughs> yeah. See, if you've been born again, then you'll show some sign. There'll be some proof of who you belong to. People won't have to wonder who you are. Matter of fact, they won't have to ask you who you are. You'll be able to be a sign on your forehead that say, I belong to God. I look like my daddy. <laughs> I'm coming home. I like it because he uses two words now. He says now, proof becomes and it gives hope. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Hope is all we need. Yeah, because if we got hope, we got faith. If we got faith, we can have those things that be not <laughs> as though they were. Let me close with this. Effective faith causes us to grow under pressure. <laughs> Y'all listening to me? Yeah. Effective faith helps us to grow under pressure. It says it in Romans 5 and 3. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now hope that does not disappoint mm, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Listen, if you got the Holy Spirit, then you have the Spirit of the living God. And He won't lead you wrong. He won't let you go astray. So then you quit blaming God for all of your mistakes. You quit blaming God for all of your sidestepping. You need to own up and confess your faults because if you do, God is faithful and he's just and he'll cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Quit blaming the devil because the devil didn't make you do it. You made a conscious choice. That's what you wanted to do. I'm moving. I'm going to give you these real quick and get out of your way. I'm, I'm about to leave. I'm about to leave. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, <laughs> yes, effective faith is hopeful anticipation. Y'all remember that song, Anticipation? How uh, do you remember it? Hopeful faith is anticipation. In other words, it is the confident assurance that something that we hope for is waiting for us. <laughs> can, I, can I help y'all? There's somebody out there that's hoping and waiting. Mm, mm, mm. Lord, all I need is that special one. Send him my way, Lord. Send her my way, Lord. I'm waiting on them, Lord. I know I can see him. I can see him. I can see him, Lord. Send him, send him, send him. Listen. You just ought to have hope so that when you see him, you'll know that you'll know what it looks like. Because, see, some of our hope is skewed. 
We done put our own designs on it. But we ought to hope for what Christ allows, not for what we want. You see, I'm pretty sure that before Brenda met me, even though I was on my way, I was six feet two. I'm sure before she met me, I was good looking. I'm sure before she met me, I done swole up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure. But when she finally really came to see the true hope, she said it was better than what I thought. <laughs> I thought I'd lighten up the situation just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Effective faith. It is confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It's the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us. Even though we can't see it, we know it's up ahead. Haven't you ever just had that, that, that feeling that you know that you know that you know? You, when, you, when, when you knew, when the Lord had made a way for you to receive whatever you were seeking, you just knew it. You knew it was coming. You knew it was going to happen. And, and you trusted God for it. And even though it made up tarry, you didn't have to worry about it because you knew that it was on the way. Somebody ought to say, this on the way. See, I need to tell somebody, you're going through something right now. And it looks like the enemy thinks that he has defeated you, that he has won. But you need to understand, help is on the way. <laughs> you see, the enemy can't overcome you, but you can overcome him. And so, therefore, you just got to trust God. And you got to learn to praise your way through. Now, I see some faces in the house that need to start a praise dance right about now. Because you know good and well, you done let some stuff get you down. You done let some stuff get in your way. It done hindered your attitude when you come in the house and he said enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise I'm going to give you a minute to praise your way out of this paper bag that's what the enemy he up in a paper bag all you got to do is praise your way through the paper bag and when you come out you're going to see what it is God has already made a way out of no way that's why I come down to Hebrews 11 and 1. He says, now faith. <laughs> he doesn't talk about you need to wait. He doesn't tell you that it'll get tomorrow. He's not talking about yesterday, but he's talking about now faith. God wants you to act right now. If you believe in what you believe in, that God is going to give it to you, I need for you to stand up on it and say, I receive my now faith. <laughs> I receive it right now. Reach up and grab what God has given you. You ought to do it in the mind because God said it. If you can believe it, you can receive it. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I tell you, I see myself over yonder one day. I see myself in the kingdom, sitting with the Father in the house not made by hand. I'm going to make it in, y'all. Not because of me, but because God said it could. <laughs> Here it is. Birthday. Last word and I'm out of here. My last word. Birthday. Now you know good well that you kind of like your birthday because people be celebrating your birthday. Yes, yes, yes. And the thing about it is when they celebrate your birthday, people come up and they give you a card. Happy birthday. And you say, oh, thank you. You shouldn't have done that. But you can't wait till you open that card. <laughs> you can't wait till you open that card. Because <laughs> you want to see what's in that card. See, but see, here's the thing about it is, if you don't, some people destroy their blessings because you walk around. Folks, people ain't even remember my birthday. It's my birthday. Nobody even said happy birthday to me. Well, you know what? You got to sometime learn to just appreciate yourself. <laughs> See, you got to get to the point. See, if you start running, if you start that thing, you're happy birthday to me. 
happy birthday to me. Somebody else might say, well, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just singing happy birthday. Why? Because it's my birthday. <laughs> this, oh, wait a minute. Oh, you got a card for me? And oh, by the way, if you believe that the blessing in the card, get this, get this, get this. If you believe that there's a blessing in the card. See, Sister Mary Ruth took the card. She opened up the card and she didn't see no money in it. But see, God is a better blessing than just money. See, God will give you peace that surpasses all of your understanding. God was, your your peace might have come in the fact that, guess what? Somebody remembered you on your birthday. That was the present. That was the gift that you didn't have to go through the whole day thinking nobody thought anything about you. And God sent somebody with a card. Oh, by the way, they had to go buy the card. That means they took a little time. To think about you. Look at somebody. Everybody had a birthday this month. You ought to think about I'm so glad you think about Oh, I'm glad y'all thought about me. Thank you very much. Y'all want to tell somebody how good he's been to you. It's your birthday. Now, I told you all that to this is because, you see, there were some other folks that were in the Old Testament that were told about a birthday. Y'all ought to get this. They were told that there would be a Messiah. That would come. They told him that he would be born in Bethlehem. And they watched and they kept on looking. But they had a spirit of anticipation and expectation that the Savior would come. But they obviously didn't believe, Brother Deacon, because when he came, they denied him. They killed him. They crucified him, put him on a cross and said, he ain't the one. But I got to tell you that the one that hung from the sixth to the ninth hour on an old rugged cross is the one that came like God said he would. He fulfilled all the prophecy. And here's the good news. When he died for you and I, he didn't stay dead. He got up. And because he lives, I, I don't know about you, but I can face tomorrow. And with that, God said the doors of the church are open. I can't close them. They've been open over 2,000 years. This is your day for tomorrow's promise to no man. While the choir sings, we invite you to show some effective faith stand on your belief trusting that God is the answer Jesus Christ is the way and you shall receive eternal life receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior today. Today is the time. Now is the now is the hour. If you think that you came here by circumstance and happenstance, God ordered your footsteps to this place. So if you're without a church home and you want to re- unite with this body of baptized believers, the deacons are here for you for that as well. And if you're falling out of the way of the, the Lord, you slipped into the world and you went so far you didn't think that Jesus could bring you back. They're standing here to receive you back unto Jesus Christ himself today as the choir sings. Amen.
there none willing to wait upon the Lord, he said he shall add to the church daily such as shall be saved. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God for that awesome word that he sent down from heaven today. Amen. 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 And as they get the announcement prepared to scroll behind me, just govern yourselves accordingly to those that are in the bulletin. Uh, keep in mind that on the first Sunday, which is October the 6th, communion that evening will be at 7 o'clock p.m. only. It will not be at 8, nor will it be at 11. Amen? Amen. We never want to leave out. Uh, this is still the month of September, so we still want to say happy birthday to all of the September birthday babies. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we never want to leave out those that are on our sick and deliverance list. Even somebody that may not be on the list, but that you know of yourself, or that may be going through our bereavement. We are our brother's keeper. We should pray one for another. Amen. Church, say amen. We have effective faith. Amen. I want you to show some tremendous love to this awesome Golden Generation Choir. Yeah, they, uh, they sung their hearts out today and we thank them for ushering us into the presence of the Lord. That's for not only them, but for all that make this service acceptable, we pray in the Lord's sight. Uh, I need for you to just keep remembering this. The word of God is for the people of God. And sooner or later, that word must take hold. It ought to be effective in our lives. And it ought to show some sign. Amen. We don't want to keep being where we were. Oh, by the way, I need for you to understand something. And, and this is this has come through much. Uh, the Holy Spirit gave me some clarity around the use of this. So we say that we are in a process. In reality, we're not in a process. When God redeemed you, he made a legal transaction that saved you that very moment. It's not a process. What you see, the change in you, are the results of the transaction. You're not in a process. You are revealing what God has done. And little by little, he's going to show more and more of what he's done in you. Amen? I just need to tell you that. Because people think that God hadn't already, he's already done what he needs to do in you. He speaks and it is. He commands and it. It ain't no process. <laughs> the transaction was a done. You've been bought and paid for. <laughs> That's why it says it does not yet appear. What you shall be, but when you, we shall be. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you all. We love you. Give our musicians some big hugs over there. All right, if there be nothing else to hold you, give your neighbor to sit beside you a hook and say, God show been good. <laughs> if nothing else to keep us, let us stand. Amen. <laughs> God has spoken that the church
Father, we thank you. We pray, Lord God, that you continue to perfect our faith so that we might, O oh Lord God, be a greater witness for you. As we prepare to leave this place, Lord God, we pray that we leave not your presence. Let your love, your grace, and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with us henceforth now and forever. The saints of God said in one voice. Amen. Amen. Show your love as you leave the house of worship.